going to talk about the envelope. And uh, if you go to your simulation input summary, I have divided these model inputs into, let me zoom in here, internal loads, people, lights, equipment, process, and hot water, and then envelope loads, which includes the climate, orientation, geometry, context shade, exterior shade, interior shade, windows, walls, floors, ceilings, mass, and infiltration. Now, that seems like a lot, but actually we've done a whole bunch of this already. We've, we've already input the geometry, we've already input the context shade, the climate is going to be very simple, the orientation is already set. So really, the, the main things that we have to cover here are about um, materials and constructions. So let me uh, walk you through that. You can see that there is this um, class right here called construction, and this gives a series of different constructions that are named by this um, the, the, this overall name. And then inside each of these constructions is a series of layers. So it starts with the outside layer, which in the case of the exterior wall is concrete, and then goes to a middle layer and an inside layer. And you can actually add, theoretically, as many layers as you want. But for this um, exercise, I've got a very specific way that I'd like you to do this. Um, and the, the way to do this, the way to um, think about it, I've got a few slides here to, to help you. The basic way to conceptualize this is uh, like this diagram here. It's almost like a sandwich or an Oreo cookie where you have two sides, the, the bread on both sides, and then a filling in the middle. And uh, this is an exterior wall, floor, or roof. And for energy modeling, particularly for thermal si simulation, there's really two characteristics that make the most difference. One is how insulative the wall is, how resistant to heat flow. And the second is how much thermal mass there is, how, how much energy it can store, and whether that energy or whether that mass is exposed to the interior or exterior environment. And so uh, the way that I've conceptualized this as the sandwich is there's a layer of thermal mass, a layer of insulation, and then a layer, another layer of thermal mass. And any of these could be adjusted infinitely. So you could have a one millimeter thick bit of thermal mass if you essentially have none. Or you could model a realistic thickness. And um, perhaps if I give you an example of a real building envelope, this would be more clear. On the left, I've got a, a typical residential building envelope. Uh, you see from the inside out, so here's this, the wood studs. This is a layer of sheetrock or gypsum board or plaster. This is a layer of fiberglass bat insulation. This is a layer of rigid insulation. There's a vented air gap, and then there's uh, lapped siding. In this version, it's very similar with wood studs, interior sheetrock, exterior insulation, and um, air gap, but now there's also this building lath and then um, some stone, like a stone veneer put on, on the outside. Now, in both of these cases, you can conceptualize the assembly like this. There's mass of some sort, in this case very little mass, in this case probably a little bit more mass. There's, in this case, two layers of insulation. There's the rigid insulation and then there's the stud uh, cavity insulation. And then there's interior mass, which is sheetrock, which is also not a huge amount, but, but, not, but, but uh, more significant than you might think. And so if I analyze that, I can sort of make my sandwich here with mass, insulation, mass. And if I can figure out the total effective thickness for this insulation, I can simplify the whole assembly to this on the right. Or, or this, um, which is that you've got a certain amount of mass, a certain thickness of mass on the outside, a certain thickness of insulation in the middle, and a certain thickness of the mass on the outside. And similar to this other assembly, there's, got a, there's a different thickness of mass on the outside, a thickness of insulation, and a thickness of mass on the inside. So the natural question is, how much thickness should we um, estimate? 
And for that, I've got in the model inputs calculator a uh, handy chart here to help you. And this is called the equivalent insulation thickness. This means that if, if in this, let's just say that all of this insulation, rigid insulation and fiberglass insulation, is all fiberglass insulation. If um, that fiberglass insulation has less R value than the rigid insulation. So this one and a half inches of rigid, rigid insulation is the equivalent of about three inches of bat insulation. And the bat insulation that's in the stud cavity is, you see it's a two by six uh, wood frame, so that's actually five and a half inches of bat insulation, but every 16 inches, or sorry, every 24 inches, there's a stud, so there's no bat in that area. And that comes out to about 10% less insulation on total, between 10 and 20%, depending on how you count it. So let's just use 20% for a second. If I had uh, five and a half inches and I had 20% less, then I would end up with four and a half inches of insulation. I hope that makes sense. Um, please puzzle over that for a little bit. You can see I've got some thermal bridge assemblies. So like that two by six wood stud at 24 inches would be would have um, a US R value, an IP R value of 15.4 or an SI R value of 2.71. But the equivalent thickness in inches would be 4.8 inches or 122 millimeters rather than the full five and a half inches or what's the equivalent five and a half inches in millimeters is sorry I can't do this in my head uh, about 200 millimeters I think okay um, so that's that and then if you had the continuous insulation like you're seeing here there's this continuous insulation on the outside we can add that to it. So if this is one inch of XPS styrofoam, then uh, we would have an additional one and a half inches of bat insulation. So we can add these together. The total assembly would be um, 4.8 plus 1.5 would be, what is that, 6.3? 6.3 three um, inches equivalent bat insulation. Um, and if you need more help or need more materials, I've listed a bunch of very common materials here. If you need more materials, um, this is a database of lots of different insulation and finish materials and you can see what the R value is. I've got it in IP units as well as SI units. Um, and uh, you'll see in a second why I've done it this this way in Energy Plus. So coming back here, you see that we've got um, concrete insulation and concrete. Now, if I wanted to model that um, this wall with effectively what did I say it was 6.4 inches, I can't remember. Let's just say 6.4 inches of um, let's say 200 millimeters of insulation here, then I need to change this insulation to 200 millimeters. And if I look at this drop down menu, I've got 100 millimeters or 300, but 200 isn't listed there. So let me show you how to make your own um, material. And of course, the, the materials are listed in a different um, class. You can see right here, there's 11 materials defined in this file. And I've just quickly defined oh, a set of concrete and a set of insulations. And the insulation, by the way, I should, I should mention, is um, using this conductivity here, watts per meter Kelvin. Um, and this is the conductivity of bat fiberglass bat insulation. So if I wanted 200 millimeters of it, I could copy this insulation 300. So I'm going to duplicate object there and rename it to insulation 200 millimeters and then change the thickness to 0.2 like that. 
Then I need to go back to the construction, go to insulation, and now you'll see that that insulation 200 millimeters is there. Um, something else I want to point out here, if you pick an insulation, or you, you could even manually type, well, let's just do it this way. If you pick an insulation that is deleted, so say I then, I delete my 200 millimeters, and I go here, you'll see that this turns peach, or pink, and as we talked about earlier, that um, pink represents a value that is um, not referenced, so or the reference is missing. So this is bad. You'll get an error if you uh, run this simulation. So make sure that that is um, that you're selecting something that is actually in the list, or make it yourself from the materials. Now, for um, this example, we've got the insulation figured out here between the rigid and the bat insulation, and we've got this exterior and interior mass. And in both of these cases, it's very minimal mass. I'd say both of these are somewhere around half an inch, which is, uh, what is that, about one and a half millimeters or so. And, no, sorry, 15 millimeters or so. Um, and so I could include here a mass construction that is 15 millimeters, there it is, on both the inside and the outside. And although it's sheetrock in the example here, let me pull this over to the side, although this is sheetrock on the inside and it is cement board siding on the outside, they're close enough in density to concrete that I'm not going to change it for the, these runs. This is a very coarse way of doing this, but it's a fast and uh, for the purposes of this model, it's accurate enough. Um, so please use this con concrete insulation concrete sandwich and, um, and let me know if you have any questions during class. Now we've got, uh, so that's true for your floor, your wall, your interior wall, your exterior roof. Actually, I should talk about the interior wall for a second. We're not modeling interior walls geometrically in any of the, um, these models because we're going to uh, this is going to be a, a one-zone model, and um, and the interior walls are not going to be there. However, there is a class further down called internal mass. You can see it right here. And that internal mass is linked to the construction name interior wall. So if you have interior walls inside your zone, the way to input the mass is through this object here.